Welcome to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. And now your host, Tim Johnson. After more than 20 years at the helm of the Louisiana Chemical Association, Dan Barnet has retired. Longtime LCA Vice President Greg Bowser has ascended to the position of president. Greg Bowser joins us when we return on this edition of the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Passion, experience, safety. These are what set Arkell Constructors apart as a premier general contractor. At Arkell Constructors, our goal is to exceed our clients' expectations, whether it's commercial, industrial, or facility maintenance. We have the team and processes in place to provide a solution for you. To us, every project is a resume for our future. Arkell Constructors, the solution for your next building project. Promoting workplace safety and family wellness. That's our motto at Gulf Coast Occupational Medicine. The Gulf Coast staff is made up of some of the most knowledgeable and hardest working medical professionals in Louisiana. We care about your safety and your bottom line. With eight convenient locations in the greater Baton Rouge area, our services include injury management, physical exams, medical surveillance, and substance abuse testing. For more information, visit us on the web at gcombr.info and ride the wave to safety. It might be one of the most efficient, most effective methods of communications we've ever used. Since 1919, we've designed and constructed hundreds of industrial plants, roads, ships, dams, and executed some of the most complex jobs in the world. In fact, our quality and dependability are legendary. Today, the legend continues as Brown & Root delivers engineering, construction, maintenance, and industrial specialty services throughout the U.S. and the world from our headquarters here in Louisiana. We are Brown & Root. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Greg Bowser, president of the LCA, the Louisiana Chemical Association, is our guest. Buddy, it's always fun to have friends on the show. Tim, it's good to be here, and uh, you know we have a lot of exciting things going on, and uh, looking forward to a great year, and, and let's hope we can keep things going. You will. I know you will. <laughs> you, you've been around the LCA for a long, long time, but only been in this new role mm -hmm. for a short period of time. How are you settling in? Pretty good. Things are coming coming along well. We've got a lot of things to deal with, but overall, it's an exciting time to be in our industry. And uh, you know, uh, the, the only difficult thing is to follow a guy like Dan Borne, who's a legend. Right. And so you just hope that you can uh, keep things between the line and make some progress along the way. Well, a mentor to a number mm -hmm. of us, you, yeah. me, a lot of folks in this industry, uh, you know, known Dan for a long, long time, but. Uh, I'm sure that because of your experience and because of how long you were, you know, Dan sort of second in command mm -hmm. there, you, you will make the transition. Anything surprised you? No, I think the, the, the demands administratively kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, how many people want to see you in person as opposed to uh, right. someone else? Mm -hmm. uh, that's been a little bit surprising, but you know, you, you learn to adjust for that. And you will, and, yeah. uh, and you'll figure that all out as you go along. Now, every leader has to put his his or her own stamp on the organization mm -hmm. that they lead, right? Uh, obviously very successful during Dan's tenure there. What might you do differently? Well, I think for me, uh, we're, I think we're moving into an era, Tim, where we have to uh, put a face on our, on our facilities, on our companies. Uh, talk about the people, the men and women that work for our companies. We, we employ over 27,000 direct jobs. Uh, very good paying jobs, they pay, have benefits, people can raise their families. I think we need to talk about that, but we also need to talk about what they do. They live and work in the community. They're the people you see coaching your t-ball teams, your soccer teams. Uh, they're the ones who are out there for United Way. And what really brought that to the forefront was when you look at the floods that we had in Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas, all of those folks who work in our industry, they were volunteers. They went out and helped their neighbors. And, and that's what we've got to talk more about now, I think. 
they really are the best ambassadors mm -hmm. for the for the industry. You know, one of the things we talk about in our consulting firm a lot is we work with with a number of petrochemical plants and refineries is we need to make sure the communities where you operate understand what you make every day and how that impacts their lives. Those of us who don't work directly in industry might drive by these plants on a daily basis and we see gates and fences and equipment and stacks and stuff, but we don't connect it to uh, the coolant that's in our air conditioner so that right. we're, we don't connect it to the medicines that we take. We don't connect it to the computers that we use and are so critical. We go along doing a better job connecting the actual products or at least the end products to how they benefit society and benefit our daily lives. I know that's something you're high on as well. That is one of the things that you know people, uh, you, you touched on it. We see the plants, we don't understand what all those things go into. We don't understand the end product. We don't understand the medicines that it goes into, how it makes our lives better, the, uh, how the fact that you can do dry cleaning better, those kinds of things, how it makes it more convenient for you uh, in the summertime when, you're, when right. your air conditioner needs exactly. to work. Exactly. And so those are the things we're going to also emphasize is that talk about what we do. And I think a lot of it has become because we don't have the end products here, right. but we have the ingredients that are very vital to those medicines and right. those kinds of things. Well, and, and, and I think making that connection helps us all. Now, uh, you know, Dan was on this television show every year, a couple of times a year for the first three years that we did it. Um, so I think that generally our audience is pretty familiar with the Louisiana Chemical yeah. Association, yeah. what you do and who you are. But let's talk about your current leadership, mm -hmm. your membership, your chair, your board. Give us an idea of who's running the association these days. Well, the Chemical Association is run by a 17-member board. They're all the top people in their companies right. here in Louisiana. Uh, they're plant managers. They're the folks who make the final decision for their operations here. So that's the kind of people we have. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Paul Mike Sell, who works for Cornerstone. Right. Uh, Paul's the chair of LCA for uh, 2017. So you have those kinds of people that are running it. It's, first, it's, it's the kind of folks that when you need a decision, they can make a decision and they don't have to call anybody else to let you know which way they want to go. They are accustomed to making decisions. They are accustomed to being in leadership roles. So I know that that board and, and particularly mm -hmm. Paul Mikesell, who who's a longtime plant manager in this region, will do a nice job. Um, you mentioned 28,000 direct jobs. I know another close to 10,000 mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, maintenance jobs that are, that are relatively secure there. Huge economic impact. Talk about just briefly, the overall state of the chemical industry in Louisiana. Well, I think we're doing we're doing tremendous in Louisiana. We have been uh, around for a long time. Uh, we've seen a, a huge growth just over the last three to five years. Uh, we've got plenty more potential on the, on the board. Uh, the big thing for us is to be able to maintain our competitiveness as a state. Uh, you know, times have changed. People have options now. I mean, you, you think about airlines, you think about every, every sector where all of a sudden the world has changed, it's become smaller, people have options, they can do things differently. And so we have to make sure we're competitive. But I'm excited about it. When you look at Lake Charles and you look at Baton Rouge, how it's growing. When you think that people talked about the economy overall, it's not doing well. But when you look at the state's economy, there are two places where the economy is just blowing and going. Right. It's been Lake Charles and Baton Rouge area. And the reason for that is because of the chemical industry and the expansion that we have going on. It really has been a real important driver for us, particularly as you've seen the oil and gas mm -hmm. industry go through some very difficult times over the last two years, lost 20,000 jobs in that, in that sector alone. And so that's critically important. And I know that a lot of those folks have been able to find employment. Got about 30 seconds left in this segment. You know, economic impact is huge. Uh, if you took the chemical industry out of Louisiana, we'd be very, very different place. And so that competitiveness is critically important, right? It, it is important because now you have, you know, for a long time ago we used to fight other, other countries. Now it's other states because they realize that the huge impact. For every one chemical job, there's about 5.2 to 6 additional jobs that's created right. in the community. Those are large impacts. And you've heard a lot of talk lately, especially from the legislature and, and the governor's office. They want jobs that, that pay well, that, that provide benefits, and that do all those things. And, and guess what? We're the ones that do that. Our, our jobs pay well above the minimum wage. Uh, they all come with both retirement and health benefits. And so it allows our employees to raise their families in the communities and be big parts of their communities where they work and, and live. It really is important in terms of the salaries and the benefits and the insurance and all of those other things. I'll take a break and come back. I want to talk specifically about some of those competitiveness issues. We've made great progress over the last 
few years, but now some of those, uh, those competitiveness issues are being rolled back on us, and I want to get into some detail on those. We're visiting with Greg Bowser. He's the president of the Louisiana Chemical Association, and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Consumers and property owners with construction projects can have a successful result or regretful experiences that could have been avoided. Before any construction project, verify licensure of the contractor and check references. Scammers will claim to be insured or bonded, so always check first. Download our app, LA Contractor, from the Android or Apple Store. Visit our website, lacontractor.org, or contact the Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors. We're here to help before things go wrong. Hire a licensed contractor. It's the law. What if I said that the American dream is alive and well, and that it exists for anyone willing to build it? That the power of a nation does not reside in its monuments, but in the hearts and minds of those who built them, and that the country's greatest heroes also wear hard hats. In today's America, it's not enough to dream about the future. You have to build it. Build your future at byf.org. For more than 20 years, the TJC Group has been helping companies assess their training needs and to develop programs that improve the effectiveness and productivity of their teams. Training doesn't have to be expensive or complicated. Let us put our experience and expertise to work for you. The TJC Group, facilitating solutions for business and industry. Spadell's Florist was founded over 30 years ago. From my mom's kitchen, we have grown into one of the largest florists in this area. There's a sense in our community that you stick together. Good times are bad, and oil and gas is part of that family. They're my neighbors. They're my customers. They're the person I'm sitting next to at church. If oil and gas is doing well, all of our businesses are doing well. We are Louisiana Oil and Gas. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Greg Bowser, president of the Louisiana Chemical Association, is with us. Um, over the last five or six years, we've seen somewhere between 50 and $60 billion worth mm -hmm. of announced petrochemical expansion and investment in our state. Uh, toward the end of 2016, I think the statistic I saw was, or that maybe Dan had shared with us the last time he was on the show, that about half of that $60 billion mm -hmm. is either complete or is under construction. The other half is uh, in some level of development, possibly some pumping the brakes a little bit. Give us an idea where we stand in terms of the big investment that has been announced in our state and is ongoing. Well, I think you have several. You've had you've had a couple in Lake Charles area. You've had some in Baton Rouge, and I think you've got a couple more to come mm -hmm. uh, shortly. Uh, they're, they're really, the, the other big ones have been either they're in engineering, so that's going to take a little while. And then you have some, as you mentioned, that, that are pumping the brakes. Some of them are taking a second look. And that happens for a number of reasons. For the economy, changes in leadership within the state, uh, just looking at the direction in which the state's going versus where they were. Uh, you look at the last couple of legislative sessions, the state has changed its incentive program, programs. And I think all of that, you know, when you're going to invest billions of dollars, in infrastructure that you can't readily pick up and move, mm -hmm. you got to think about it. You got to think about the policy that you're going to be under, and I think all that's going on. Well, let's talk about that competitiveness because you were at the center over the last, say, mm -hmm. 15, 18 years of a lot of significant progress that was made. If we mm -hmm. go back to Governor Foster, mm -hmm. Governor Blanco, under Governor Jindal, significant process, uh, progress in making Louisiana more competitive, particularly with Texas and some of the states that we go head to head against. We did things like eliminate the sales tax on, on energy, mm -hmm. natural gas, utilities. We rolled back the tax on manufacturing machinery and equipment. Uh, we had the 10-year industrial property tax exemption in place. We did a lot of things from an incentive standpoint to attract them. In the last year of the general administration due to some budget constraints and in the first year of the Edwards administration due to some budget constraints, some of that stuff has been rolled back, some of it temporarily. Talk about the current state of our competitiveness, mm -hmm. where we are, and maybe where you see it going. Well, I think where we are right now, what's, what's hurting us is the uncertainty. 
uh, over the last 12 months, you know, the governor came in, Governor Edwards came in, he raised about a billion three to a billion five in new taxes. Primarily, a lot of that was on the manufacturing community. And so those folks are having to take a long, hard look at that and, and decide where are we going. As long as our budget stays unstable, and, and it, it appears the legislature doesn't have the appetite or the willingness to make the, the hard cuts, but they don't want to tax individuals. So if you're a business getting ready to make a, make a business decision, you're the only guy that's left. Right. And that's what's happening around the country. People are looking at it and saying, wait a minute, let's, let's see what happens in Louisiana. Well, and, that, and you mentioned uncertainty, right? And that's the word for the six years that we've been doing the radio show and the four years now mm -hmm. that we've been doing the television show that most business leaders mention more than anything else. Tell us what the rules are. Keep them uh, standard. Keep them consistent. And we will play by them. That's right. It's very difficult for us to announce major investment and then the rules change mm -hmm. before we start uh, actually bringing that investment out of the ground. I know you talk to chemical plant leadership regularly. It's your job. Right. Uh, what do you hear? Well, the, the big thing is that don't change the rules in the middle of the game. Tell us what the rules are, as you said, and we'll play by them. If the state of Louisiana says we're not going to give any incentives for any chemical plants at all beginning January 1, 2018, that's the decision. I think it's a bad one, but you announce that decision and everybody knows exactly what's going to happen. And, and you're not going to be very competitive, but at least as a business person who's going to, who's going to make that big investment, that, that hope to have a, a plant up and running in 18, 24 months, I'll know what kind of climate I'm facing. And that's yeah. been the biggest thing. Every one of these companies that might invest here, as Lauren Scott, our friend, the economist, says, has some actuary, some finance person down in some office somewhere, and they're crunching numbers. That's right. And they're saying, is it cheaper to do this in Louisiana or Texas or California or New Jersey or Singapore mm -hmm. or somewhere else around the world? Because as you mentioned, we truly are in a global economy. So let me ask you this. Given the changes that have taken place, given the fact that we've, uh, we're tinkering with the 10-year industrial property tax exemption, which for years has been sort of the cornerstone in incentive program for the petrochemical industry, is this still a good place for industry to invest? I, I think it is, and here's why. Because I think it's an ever-changing world. And I think there, there's a belief that the people in Louisiana understand what the chemical industry and the manufacturing community has meant to our state. And I think there's going to be some balancing of it all. Right now, there's no balance to it. You know, there's got to be some balance. You got to look at it on a long-term fix. For example, we talk about competing with Texas. Well, we can't have the same incentives as Texas because just because of scale, right. we lose. So our incentive program has to be better than what they're doing. If not, why, why come here? You know, uh, a friend of mine told me this, Tim, and I thought it was a great story. He said, you know, think about it. If you're from New York or you're from California, and you work for a major chemical company and they say, you know, Tim, here's your choice. You can go to Louisiana or you can go to Houston. Yeah, right. What are you going to choose? If you're not from Louisiana, if you've never been there, everybody's heard about Houston. And that, that then factors into it. You have to be better. Now, once you get here and meet our people and the work ethic and, and incentives we have and what we do, nobody wants to leave. But I think we have to be competitive on the front end. Uh, and being competitive doesn't mean being even because I think we lose. Right. Well, and you think about huge economies mm -hmm. like California and like Texas. Now, you know, we compete, I think, very well against a place like California where the yeah. cost of doing cost business of is right. higher. But Texas as a state has made a decision that they want to grow manufacturing mm -hmm. and they are extremely aggressive. And as you say, because of scale, because of the size of their workforce, because of the size of their existing industry, because of the synergies that are created, we've got to be better. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. I want to get into the upcoming legislative session. I want to get into sort of the future, where you think some of these things are going in terms of our competitiveness, because mm -hmm. they're critically important issues for the industry. We're visiting with Greg Bowser. He's the president of the Louisiana Chemical Association, and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. For over a quarter century, Kelly's has operated with honesty, integrity, and above all, safety. Kelly's features a fleet of quality equipment operated by dedicated, safety-minded employees skilled in land clearing, above-ground right-of-way maintenance, vegetation control, station yard and man facility maintenance, above-ground pipeline support, and more. Kelly's Industrial Services, where pipeline right-of-way maintenance gets done right. 
For more than 25 years, the TJC Group has been helping industry communicate and build relationships with communities, elected officials, and governmental agencies. We are the leading firm in the U.S. for the development, management, and facilitation of industry-based community advisory panels. Whether you're building a new facility or you manage an existing business, let us put our community and governmental relations experience to work for you. The TJC Group, facilitating solutions for business and industry. What if I said that whatever good things you build, build you? And that in this economy, sweat never loses its value. What if I said that there isn't a challenge in the world too great for a craft professional with the right tools? And that the steps that lead from where you are to where you want to be can only be built by you. Build your future at byf.org. Keen Miller traces its roots to the dawn of the petrochemical industry in Louisiana. As the legal needs of the sector grew, our firm emerged as a leader in environmental law, economic development, real estate, employment, utilities regulations, and more. Today, these same clients and those new to our state continue to rely upon the firm and its attorneys for creative ideas, practical advice, and Louisiana know-how. Industrial strength law. Learn more at KeenMiller.com. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Greg Bowser, uh, President of the Louisiana Chemical Association, is with us. We talked in the last segment about uh, this whole idea of stability, mm -hmm. keeping the rules the same. We've talked about competitiveness for the industry. You know, we're, we're, we're going through all these budget issues in our state, and there's a lot of debate about whether industry pays its fair share. Mm -hmm. You've heard that debate. You hear some people on one side of the aisle that might say, you know, if business just paid more, we'd, we'd do better. What, how do you respond to that? Well, I think business pays uh, more than its fair share. Uh, you know, for, for the last several years, and I've been doing this a long time, Tim, as you, as you well know, it, it seems like there are different approaches to it. And what we've taken, the approach we have chosen to take is that we have looked over the last several years, we have looked at raising revenue. You go back, whether it was uh, Governor Jindal, uh, before that I think it was Governor Blanco, whoever it was, let's raise revenue. And so you, you take the last couple of years, we've raised revenue. And every time we've done that, it's still not enough. Right. At some point, we're going to have to look at how we spend what we get. Now, I, I'm not here to tell you that programs are good or bad. But I do know that if you keep raising revenue and you keep coming up short, at some point you got to look at the other side of the equation. A very serious discussion has to happen on that side. There are some things that we fund at the state level that maybe we shouldn't do anymore. Right. Maybe we should give authority to the locals and see if they can fund it if they really want it. Those are the things that I think we fundamentally have to change. And, and we're not seeing that right now. I mean, you, you know, everybody's talking about don't cut this, don't cut that. No one's talking about, let's take a long, hard look at what we're doing and how we're spending it. I think there are a lot of great programs out there. You and I have both been involved in the legislative process for a long, long time. And one of the things that's always amazed me is we always hear about cutting budgets. We rarely hear about eliminating programs, yeah. right? So yeah. what we do is we take already marginally funded programs and we cut them even more so yeah. that their performance is even more mediocre, right? right? right. Instead of saying, is this something that the state really needs? Or as you just mentioned, is this something that in most other states, local government provides and should we shift it? But that's a tough political fight, right? The, the folks at the local don't, don't want those responsibilities pushed back on them and then have to raise the revenue to do it. No, they don't. And that's, that's the thing, no, but, but you got to make those decisions. That's, that's why, that's called leadership. Right. You have to make those decisions. You know, I, you know, over the last 15 months, I got asked the question, well, where's your plan? Well, what, what plan are you looking for? Well, what, the budget plan, well, that's not what I do. Right. You know, and, and, and mostly if I give you the suggestion, they're not going to like it. Right. But I think, you need, I think it needs to be an overall review of how we do what we do. And, and, you know, for a long time, I've been opposed to a constitutional amendment. Maybe it's time to blow the whole thing up. Maybe you can't fix it in the current structure. Maybe right. you have to get in another structure to do that. Well, that speaks to the next question, right? So here we are. We find ourselves as we tape this show with a couple of days left in this most recent special legislative mm -hmm. session, $304 million midterm budget deficit. This is the 15th mid-year bu budget deficit in the last nine years. Absolute insanity. We keep kicking the can down the road. We're not making structural changes. 
What are you watching in this legislative session? It only has a couple of days left as we tape. Uh, by the time the show airs, it will be over. What are you paying attention to? What I'm watching to see what they do, how much rainy day fund money they take to fund it, and here's why. That's one-time money. So if you fund $100 million out of it, when you come back in, in April, you're going to have to find an additional $100 million at a minimum. To maintain. To just to maintain. Right. And so that's why how much money they use out of rainy day fund, if they use a rainy day fund, is important. Because that, that's what they call you kicking that decision down to a couple of months now. And then you got to come back and fix it in the next budget. We really do have to take a whole big picture view of how we budget. And I, and I think that the administration has, with this, with this task force on budget and, and tax restructuring, is, is looking at those things. But man, we've got to accelerate that process. We've waited too long and, and we keep digging ourselves in a deeper hole. I think we do. You look at that task force, I thought it was a great idea, but I think they made a crucial error early on. They started talking about what's the budget. Well, they never talked about anything about budget restructuring, about mm -hmm. budget reductions. All they talked about is how can we raise revenue to fit the budget number. Right. And I thought, that, that, I thought they kind of lost their way on that. You know, they should have looked at both sides and they did not. Greg, isn't it about priorities? I say this all the time. Let's, let's decide what our top five or six priorities are for state government. Education, health care, public safety, infrastructure development and maintenance. Let's fund them adequately, let's demand excellence from them, and then let's fight over whatever's left for all of the other things mm -hmm. that state government should be doing, and let's push those things that are traditionally done in most states by local government back to local government. Let's have the political will to have adult conversations about tough subjects and make decisions. I agree, I think that's the way to do it. The problem is, can I, can I get a majority of either the House or Senate, along with the governor in a room, and agree what the priorities are? Right. I don't think you can. Very difficult. And that's, that is the difficult part, problem. If you can ever agree on the priorities, the funding part of it's gonna come easier, but right. we can't agree on the priorities. Got about a minute left, so I wanna ask you two things. Let's hit them both pretty quickly. Uh, what do you expect in the 2017 regular session? What will you be looking for? I'll be looking to see how they plan to fund this budget. I think that you've got to come back in order to keep the economic development end of it going with, with some things that tell the, the, the business community, hey, look, this is what we're going to look like going forward. Uh, that, that's, that's what I'm hopeful for. Some uh, restructuring. Some restructuring. Some structural change, right? Some structural change, some long-term adjustment, something that we can hang our hat on for the next three to five years. Uh, the other thing I'm going to look for is, is where are we going from a spending perspective? Because if we pass every revenue measure that was asked to be passed a year ago, we'd still have a budget problem. Crazy. That should scare people. 15 seconds, what's on the horizon for the LCA? Well, I think the LCA is exciting times. We're going to try to make sure that this business climate in Louisiana remains strong and competitive and that we, uh, we get out there and create more jobs, more opportunities for the citizens of our state. That's what you do best, my That's friend. That's what we want to do. Thank you for your time. Enjoy it. We'll have you back sometime soon. Yeah. That's a wrap, guys. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week at this very same time for another edition of the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Hey guys, be sure to check out our new LBIS website, www.LouisianaBusinessAndIndustryShow.com.